We are standing at the Cross of Sacrifice in the middle of Belfast City Cemetery, which has the largest concentration of war graves in Ulster. There are 573 war fatalities buried in this cemetery, 290 from the Great War and 283 from the Second World War. The latter figure includes three Norwegian sailors and five unidentified sailors. Of the war fatalities buried in this cemetery, 437 have their own plots and 136 are named on the screen wall. And whilst the vast majority of plots are marked with a Commonwealth War Graves Commission headstone or recumbent plaque, quite a few fatalities are commemorated on family memorials. We will be laying a chrysanthemum on each grave because this was a flower used to denote remembrance during the Great War. And the last Saturday in September was Chrysanthemum Day and was organised by the Ulster Horticultural Society. There are two areas where there are concentrations of war graves in neat rows. One near the Cross of Sacrifice contains 59 war graves, and one down by the Ballymurphy River contains 106 war graves and three special memorials for men buried in other cemeteries. In addition, service personnel who died and are buried elsewhere are often commemorated on family memorials. This combination of different types of commemorations and memorials occurs for war graves in cemeteries and graveyards across Ulster. Finally, 154 civilians who were killed during the bombing of Belfast by the Luftwaffe in 1941 are also buried in Belfast City Cemetery. There are also Belfast Blitz memorials in the nearby Milltown Roman Catholic Cemetery and in the historic Shankill Graveyard. During this short video, we will be visiting war graves that reflect both world wars, the various services, and will include a visit to the grave of one of the female war fatalities buried in this cemetery. In selecting the names to commemorate, we have been guided by the phrase, lest we forget. City Section B, Grave 022. On 7th of May 1915, the passenger liner RMS Lusitania was torpedoed by a German U-boat off the old head of Kinsale. She sank in just 18 minutes, with the loss of 1,198 passengers and crew, including 128 Americans. The sinking of the Lusitania is thought to have had a major impact on the decision of America to join the war two years later. It was also effective in increasing recruitment in Ireland. This is the family grave of one of the crew, typist Sarah Rachel Orr Hale, who was 29 when she died. She was born in Ballymena to John and Matilda Jane Hale. In 1901, Sadie was living with her brother and her widowed mother at North Parade in East Belfast. In 1911, they lived in Great Crosby near Liverpool. Sadie is buried here along with her brother Fred, who died exactly six months later on the 7th of November 1915, and her mother, who died in April 1919. City Section I, Grave 575. This beautiful Celtic cross is an example of a war grave of which there is a family memorial rather than the Commonwealth War Graves Memorial, and it is a particularly poignant story. Sergeant Thomas Samuel Telford of the Motor Machine Gun Corps was taken ill during his journey home from Mesopotamia to be demobilised. On arrival in the UK, Samuel was transferred to a military hospital in Grantham, Lincolnshire, where he died on the 12th of March, 1919. He was the son of Thomas and Mary Telford of 88 University Avenue in Belfast and was just 19 years old when he died. I am sure that he had written to his parents and maybe sent postcards from Alexandria or Malta or Gibraltar. The joyful expectation of the family would have turned to despair as he passed away so close to home. City Section K, Grave 289 This memorial was erected to the memory of three brothers from one family who all died on the Western Front. They were the sons of Henry Arthur and Helen Hunter Newell of 362 Antrim Road in Belfast. This is not a family headstone on which war fatalities are commemorated. It is a war memorial. It is shaped like the cenotaph is flanked by shells and topped by a wreath bearing the words, The Glorious Dead. Between the dates 1914 and 1918, you will see the outline where there was an embellishment on the memorial. 
I puzzled over this and initially thought it was a crown to represent service to king and country. It was David McCallion, curator of the War Years Remembered Museum, who pointed out that the shape represented the cap badges of the three regiments. In the centre is the badge of the Black Watch, with the Royal Irish Rifles badge canted to the right and the Royal Fusiliers badge canted to the left. Company Sergeant Major George Frank Newell died on 6th August 1917 at the age of 26 while serving with the 15th Battalion Royal Irish Rifles. He is buried in the Wiltshire Farm Cemetery in Belgium. Lance Corporal Walter Newell of the 6th Battalion of the Black Watch died on 10th July 1915, age 26, and is buried in the Rue David Military Cemetery at Flerbeau in France. Private David Lumsden Newell of the 20th Battalion Royal Fusiliers died on 13th March 1916, age 21, and is buried in the Cambrin Churchyard Extension in France. A fourth son, Thomas Earls Newell, also served with the Public School Boys Battalion of the Royal Fusiliers, receiving a commission in November 1917 and surviving the war. Glenelina Extension Section A, Grave 362. On 3rd June 1940, Rifleman Hugh Joseph Thompson of the 2nd Battalion Royal Ulster Rifles died at the age of 20. He was a son of Johnny and Annie Thompson and the husband of E.L. Thompson of Belfast. Glenelina Extension, Section H, Grave 262. This is the grave of Private Thomas Clulo of the 2nd Battalion South Lancashire Regiment, who died on the 19th September 1916 at the age of 30. He was the husband of Eleanor Clulo of 10 Renfrew Street in Belfast. This is where the Commonwealth War Graves Commission have commemorated the final resting place of air mechanic Albert Edward Campbell. Albert was born in 1901 to John and Jane Campbell and his last known home was 12 Ambrose Street in Belfast. He died in England in March 1919 and was brought home to Belfast the same month. Throughout the city cemetery and other graveyards in the country, you will see family memorials to those who died during the Great War and are honoured by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. Albert's story is unusual, as his burial plot actually belongs to another family, the Youngs, whose own name is not marked anywhere other than on official burial records. It was not unknown during this period for family and friends to share burial plots, and it is believed that the two families knew each other from the York Road area and that they were also distantly related by marriage. I discovered this when I was researching the young family and I wanted to know more about Albert. I have not been able to trace any living relatives of the Campbells, but hopefully I will one day. Until then, I will continue to honour Albert each Remembrance Day. Glenelina Extension, Section H, Grave 371. Just visiting the grave of my great uncle, Charles Bomford, born born 27 4 1896. Charles enlisted in the Royal Marine Maid Infantry, 21st of the 8th, 1914. Charles was sent to Gallipoli, went to Plymouth, then was trained at Plymouth, and then went to Gallipoli. At Gallipoli, he was severely wounded by shrapnel, was returned to Malta, then Malta to Southampton, then Southampton back to Belfast where he was in Musgrave Hospital off the Lisburn Road. Later, towards the end, he was in the Ulster Volunteer Hospital at Botanic. Charge is buried in this plot in the city cemetery in the 13th of December. 1916. The silver badge. During, as we've discovered, Charles also lost an arm and he also got a leg amputated due to the, the effects of the shrapnel. Very lucky, in some ways, to get him back to have somebody to go to in Belfast. Glenelina Extension, Section P, Graves 190, 191 and 167. On 31st March 1918, SS Celtic was torpedoed by U-77 in the Irish Sea 
with the loss of six men, all from Liverpool and all buried close together in this cemetery. SS Celtic had been constructed by Harland and Wolf in Belfast and launched in 1901. At Plot 190, there is a memorial erected by the White Star Line to commemorate four of the fatalities. Greaser Robert Bodie, aged 44, was the son of Robert and Tilly Bodie and the husband of Sarah Ellen Bodie of 49 Harriet Street in Liverpool. Fireman George Richardson, aged 21, a son of Isaac and Ellen Richardson and the husband of Teresa Richardson of 6 Sheridan Street in Liverpool. Fireman Samuel Routledge, 27, was the husband of Margaret Ann Routledge of 60 Cavendish Road in Liverpool. Trimmer William Edwin Gleave, aged 18, was the son of William Edwin and Mary Ann Gleave of 153 Litherland Road in Bootle, Liverpool. Next to the plot is a Colmoth Wargraves headstone for Chief Boots Charles Jeffers, aged 46, a son of Eleanor Roberts of 4 Millard Grove in the Everton district of Liverpool. Immediately behind is a second memorial erected by the White Star Line in memory of 4th Engineer Stanley MacDonald of Queensland in Australia. We now move down to the rows of gravestones next to the Ballymurphy River. This is Glenelina Extension AS Grave 23. Sergeant Charles William Evans, Royal Air Force, died on 19th July 1944, aged 26. He was the son of Joseph and Helen Evans and the husband of Elizabeth Montgomery Evans of Belfast. Glenelina Extension Section BS, Grave 24. Lieutenant John Allen Schwartz died on 1st November 1944, aged 23, while serving with the Royal Canadian Naval Volunteer Reserve on HMS Whitaker. He was the son of Edward and Mary Letitia Schwartz from Edmonton in Alberta. Glenelina Extension Section BS, Grave 130. Signalman Lynn Edgar Landon Ralph was serving on HMS Sarawak when he died at the age of 20 on 31st March 1945. He has no known connection to Belfast or Ulster, being a son of Edgar George Bernard and Winifred Doris Ralph of Harrow in Middlesex. Numerous naval personnel from Great Britain and other parts of the world are buried in cemeteries along the coast of Ulster. Many of them have never been identified and their headstones bear the words, known unto God. Glenelina Extension, Section L1, Grave 218. Sapper James Orr of 6 Bomb Disposal Company, Royal Engineers, died on 3rd October 1940 at the age of 43. He was a son of Francis and Elizabeth Orr and the husband of Margaret Rebecca Orr of Belfast. His son, Lance Corporal Robert John Dillon Orr, 2nd Battalion Royal Ulster Rifles, died on 19th July 1944 at the age of 20 and he is buried in the La Delivrande War Cemetery at Douvres in the Calvos region of France. The graves of three sailors of the Norwegian Merchant Navy are buried nearby. They also gave their lives in the Second World War.